Welcome again to the second part of our Monday Live Lunchcast. Uh, I am happy to be joined with David Gibbs from the Community Action Agency of Somerville. How Very are you? good. Very yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think uh, you've been here often enough. Yeah. I, I, I got it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a long name, and, and uh, we, we, we shortchange it to CAS most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes I even have trouble getting it out. <laughs> Anyhow, nice to see you. Nice to good see to you. Be here. Uh, so we are highlighting in these segments um, nonprofits and uh, other uh, agencies that are doing some great work here in Somerville uh, in, in, in the hopes of not only highlighting your work, but maybe getting some, some donation during the uh, giving season, some right. donations or volunteer opportunities, anything else you have going on. Yep. So uh, what do you have going on, David? Sure, <laughs> sure. So... Um, let me just give a brief overview of what our programs are, and then I can definitely talk about volunteer opportunities. Absolutely. Uh, not, not a lot of those, let me be upfront about that. But so, and I'll, and I'll explain why. Um, sure. We run uh, two main programs. We have Head Start, which is a preschool program for three and four year olds that also provides a lot of wraparound services for their families. Um, a lot of direct support, a lot of referral support. Um, so that's our biggest program. And as you can imagine, you know, a preschool program needs to be run by trained people. So there's not a lot of volunteering going on there. Um, we do have some folks who come in and say read to the kids in, in classrooms. And if there are people listening who would like to do that, they can definitely contact me and we can make arrangements for them to come to a Head Start classroom and, and play or read or something like that. Mm. Um, our next biggest program is our housing advocacy program which works with folks who are in danger of losing their housing primarily. Um, again, very specialized work, very highly trained work as they're going into the court system and helping people through the whole landlord tenant process. Um, not something that lends itself to, to volunteering much. Yeah. Um, but that is a program that is in constant need of donations because it's very underfunded and the need is extremely great. Uh, we, we see new people coming in facing eviction literally every week. It's um, a steady stream, unfortunately. Uh, so that's a, that's a program that's always um, in need. Uh, we just had a great event uh, this past Saturday at Sally O'Brien's. We had an afternoon event uh, with a live and silent auction. I'm still tallying up the money, but I think we made over $2,000 for that's that great. program. So that's great, yeah. Um, we do volunteer income tax assistance. Uh, and that's actually a program, of course, that's almost entirely volunteer. Mm. Um, you can tell by the name. <laughs> um, so uh, that's basically uh, every, every spring during tax season, we're helping folks fill out their tax returns and make sure they get the maximum return they're entitled to. Um, and we have uh, one paid staff person who supports that program. All of the rest of it is done by volunteers. Wow, that's amazing. It is amazing. And, and what kind of, when I first, w we just started doing this last year. I didn't know a lot about it before then. And I thought, gosh, we're going to have to find a whole bunch of tax accountants, right, to do this. It turns out not at all. The IRS has a really great training program. Mm -hmm. Literally anybody can get trained to do this kind of yeah. work. Yeah. But they don't do complex corporate tax returns or anything like that. You know, they're doing household returns. Um, but we have a training for it that's coming up this coming Saturday, in fact. Uh, but if there are folks listening who are interested in volunteering and learning how to be tax preparers for this purpose, it's just an amazing program. Um, probably the best return on investment of anything we do. Uh, last year, we spent about $8,000 on this program. And we returned over one hundred and twenty-five thousand wow. dollars in in um, in people's individual refunds, tax right, refunds, right, directly wow. into their pockets. So that's amazing. Yeah, it's it's a really great program, um, and uh, and, and yeah. Where, where's the training taking place? It'll be time? it'll be right here at our offices, right through that window, over at our our main office here in Union Square. Okay. Sixty-six seventy Union Square is yep. where we are. And what are. time is that training at? 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock in the morning. Yep, um, but folks can just give us a call and if, if they're interested. Very, yeah. very good. Yeah. Um, and so there was, there's some news in Somerville that uh, there is an ordinance that passed uh, where landlords need to uh, inform tenants of their rights before yes. eviction. Yes. Um, what's, what's, your, what's your take on that? Really glad to see that happening. Um, I think our city is doing some really good things on the on, uh, to try to prevent displacement, mm -hmm. to try to mitigate some of the incredible price rise you know we've seen in, in housing costs. Um, 
And we're not alone. There are plenty of cities that have tried this out, and it's and it's worked really well. Um, it's you know it's actually not that big a deal if you think about it. All they're doing is is giving folks information, yeah. uh, sharing resources with them, and it's just an, an easy way to get that information into the right hands. Sorry, there goes my phone. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's really glad to see that as as tenants need it, yeah, like exactly. at the moment that they need it. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I've been working with uh, our new Office of Housing Stability. That's one of the things we've talked about in one of their initiatives. So it's great to see that happen. Wow. Yeah. And so, and so the, is the best way for people to make a donation and to reach out to you, is that through your website? Yeah, that's a, certainly the easiest thing to do. If they just go to caasomerville.org, -ca uh, there's a donate buttons all over the place. You can't yeah. miss them. Um, they're obviously welcome to send us checks and you know drop off boatloads of cash, of course. Um, <laughs> the other thing I should say, though, is that we also accept donations of clothing and of uh, dry goods, food, um, and things like diapers or you know uh, uh, hygiene products, personal hygiene products. Um, we have a, a small pantry over there, and we give food and clothing to anybody that needs it. Yeah. Um, so folks are welcome to contact us about donating to that as well. And uh, my, my previous guests at the uh, Greater Somerville Homeless Coalition mentioned yeah. you all as a community partner. Oh, yeah. Um, how, how, did, how is that? Uh, cooperation with other Somerville agencies with you all? You know, it's uh, one of the things I love about working in Somerville is that we're we're all too small to not cooperate. <laughs> <You> <laughs> that know? makes sense, yeah. It's, it, we're a small city and nobody has the resources to try to do everything by themselves. And so we're, we're whether we, we do like it, but whether we like it or not, we cooperate with the city government, with the other nonprofits in town. Um, with the uh, Greater Somerville Homeless Coalition, you know, since we don't do work directly with homeless folks, if, if somebody homeless comes to us, we're liable to send them over their way. Yeah. They send us folks who are in the eviction process. We collaborate every spring, uh, every summer rather, on the Save Our Homes Walk, which raises money to help keep people housed when they're in, you know, need emergency cash. Um, yeah, we, we work closely with them and with the other nonprofits in town. And do you see a particular spike in the winter as as um, uh, the uh, Homeless Coalition does? Or, Not so or much in our work. Yeah. Our work yeah. is pretty steady year round. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be a, a season for evictions <laughs> or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, and Head Start, you know, our Head Start program runs year round. Um, but I should say to anybody listening, we're always enrolling in that program. Um, it's you know, if you if you have a three or four year old and you're looking for preschool, um, you don't have to have done that in September. Um, we have open slots right now, and we usually have room during the year to bring people in, so yeah. folks can contact us for that too. Um, how do you make the the pitch to somebody who says, uh, "Well, isn't Head Start federally fu uh, funded?" Um, yeah. You know what? What's what's your pitch to those people? Sure. Yeah, Head Start is federally funded, but it's not federally funded at a large enough level to um, to serve every eligible child within our service area. You know, in in uh, in between Cambridge and Somerville, we do both Cambridge and Somerville for Head Start. It's hard to know exactly how many kids in, are income qualified, but we serve 267 at a time, I'm quite sure that there are at least 500 or 600 kids who are income qualified for this program. So the feds could literally double my budget and we'd still, you know, probably not be serving every eligible child out there. Wow. Yeah. So we, we are absolutely looking for more support for that program too. There's a, um, a particular need that we're thinking about right now is um, children with, uh, you know, fairly severe learning or emotional disabilities. Um, they require extra help, mm -hmm. and that requires extra training, extra staffing, um, and that's a that's a, a need we see growing, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, is there any uh, anything coming up on the calendar for this month or uh, coming up through the winter that uh, we should be on the lookout for? Um, the other thing I I I. Sh I Sorry, can't speak all of a sudden. <laughs> I should mention our organizing work because that's the sort of the fourth thing that we do is sort of tenant and community organizing when the need arises. Mm -hmm. um, 
Again, this Saturday, we're going to be hosting a community meeting at our Allen Street Head Start building for folks who live over in the Linden Street, Allen Street um, area, uh, just to talk about development in the neighborhood, um, get, a, get a chance for people to get together and talk and, and share their thoughts about what's going on in their neighborhood. Um, we do uh, a lot of that kind of project whenever the need arises. So that'll be this Saturday at the Allen Street Head Start building at 11 o'clock. So the VITA training is at 10 o'clock at our offices. This meeting, the Allen Street over meeting. To, yeah, to well, I, I'm literally going to be <laughs> back and forth a little bit. So, yeah. Other than that, I don't think we have any any particular uh, events yeah. lined up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, that, that's great that you act in that uh, capacity to facilitate conversations as yeah. well um, with the, the fast pace of change in this area. Yeah. Um, I think the common thread with, with the organizations that we talk to is, is that change yeah. and rising costs and, um, you know, that, that there are a group of agencies just like Community Action Agency of Somerville to, to meet the, those needs and to fill in gaps. Um, that's what we're here for. Yeah, it's yeah. important. Yeah. Um, so one more time, what is that website uh, sure. for to, to funnel people in your direction? It is caasomerville.org, caasomerville.org. Yeah. yeah, so make a donation. It goes towards some, some really great programs like Head Start, um, facilitating, uh, and other other programs, as, as David said, yeah. you know, further, further in the conversation uh, between communities of Somerville, yeah. uh, keeping Somervillians here that want to remain here. That's right. Yeah. You know, the pace of change is is great. The new development brings a lot of great things, but uh, you know, if, if we're not here to experience it and have fun with it, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So. In all in all my conversations that I have with people about the rapid change, it's yeah. it's, it's like. Um, who who deserves to live here? Yeah, exactly. Um, and and keeping people here that that want to live here. That's right. That are that are being priced out. Uh, if we're not important. creative and deliberate about figuring out solutions to this problem, it'll just run us over, frankly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But like I said, I think we're we're doing some good work as a city. I think so too. Yeah. All right. Well, All thank right. you very much, David. Of course. Thank you.